let off some steam. Welcome to episode 15 of Let Off Some Steam. So, this episode was supposed to be a special little display and review of some very special games that required very special equipment. If you can't figure out what it is, I'll assume you just ingested a lot of lead as a kid. Unfortunately, I've had a little trouble obtaining the footage from the recording. Nobody's fault, however, I'll have to postpone it for another time. Apologies to everyone I tried to get hyped at this and to everyone else. You should talk to me more, shouldn't you, you wankers? I have a Discord, you know. I won't bite. Hard. So episode 15 is instead going to be about a game called Battle Group 2. A game released on Steam back in 2014, but before that was a tablet game. You can already imagine the fun that was absent in this experience. Also, due to this game having been made by Inbreds, it doesn't record entirely well on my software, so the video I will show you makes the frame rate look choppy like it was chopped with a bluntly chopped chopping knife. I hope I made it crystal clear. The game starts off with some woman telling you to shoot at factories. Kill the workers, they're all bloody unionists anyways. Pick that up your shirt, Carl. That confuses me as only a handful of seconds later, we learn we're a peacekeeping organisation. Even though we murder the working class. Literally. Bloody globalists, I tell you. Ah, we're coming for you, globalist! This guy shows up, threatens us, we get attacked, we sail forward, wash, rinse, repeat. Ah, fuck it, I'm re-recording this on Bandicam. It's a fucking moth right in front of my screen, I just wanted to fuck off. Pretty simple, there's not much to say apart from my ship getting suddenly taken away from me and having to start from scratch with another, smaller ship. I'm gonna buy a better ship. With blackjack and hookers! <laughs> There's not much to say about the gameplay either, really. It's a very basic version of a point-and-click game, but without a mystery. Any of you guys heard of that old obscure title, The Night Before? That, that game with graphics that looked like it was made on MS Paint? No? Okay, look up and play The Night Before, and then come back. Imagine that game, but with all the items you need to progress in your inventory on an endlessly moving wall. I could have said Summer Max, couldn't I? God's sake. You click your mouse, people go boom, make many widows, don't lose sleep in it, wash rinse, repeat. The only time I had to think about stuff was to know who to shoot and when, or even if I should shoot some enemies at all, and concentrate on the projectiles, which I should have done more of. Many a fine ship and crew were lost for me in patience. Also, it doesn't help that enemies can shoot missiles when it's directly above you, where you have no chance of seeing it deploy. <laughs> the word I used to describe the gameplay is repetitive. Very, very repetitive. Repetitive. You know what, I'm gonna give this game a little credit. The art style makes me think of a period in gaming that's now lost to time, unfortunately. The 90s, games like Doom 2000, Fallout, Mortal Kombat, times where sprites were made to look as real as possible with pretty great animations for the time. And you know what, it triggers a little bit of nostalgia for me when I played Doom 2000 for like six hours straight as a kid. I was not a popular child. However, I would continue to compliment this game on its rather throwback style of visuals if the sprites had any animations. At all. The game looks like it's a video recording of a kid pushing his dad's airfix model on one of those plate carpets for five minutes. No animations on the plane, boats, only for the helicopter rotors and this weird submarine thing. The sound is also trying to make the game seem like a badass high adrenaline Hollywood movie with explosions, electric guitars, passenger planes. But of course, even with all of that going on, you notice it's exactly as badass as it looks. Down this wall. <laughs> Again. Not worth shaking a dying cat at. The exposition for the world is really... shit. Actually, I'm wrong. It can't be shit if it doesn't exist. I have no idea what Yura is. I have no idea what this is. I don't know what that is. Who is she? Who is that? And why am I suddenly a war criminal? Nothing got explained to me, so I'm just assuming this is a game of Battleship that turned very violent very quickly. The story is, you're a gunner on an, uh, ahem, peacekeeping navy ship, and for some reason, destroying factories. This mystery male turns up and threatens us after getting rid of about, I don't know, 700 jobs. You then go around the world looking for talent in very significant places where you expect to see landmarks, but the game is top-down so only get the faint whiff of a landmark as you watch the ocean pass on by for the 90,000th time. Frankly, I'm on the side of Talon in this case, a globalist agenda stripping away jobs from a nation with its own sovereignty with policies that clearly care about the working class and giving them good, honest work. Screw you, whatever your organization's name is. So I end up hating my boats, loving their boats, and realise I'm a communist. The story perfectly suits a mobile game. Shallow, pointless, and a thing to get you from one way to the other without a tear, a shaking fist, or a shit-eating grin. Well, this game wasn't worth playing. First off, I had trouble recording it, so I had to re-record the whole damn thing. Secondly, all I was doing was sitting there, staring at a screen, clicking the mouse until I realised my brain melted out of my bloody ears. You know when you're at a karaoke with The Office and Steve from accounting goes up to sing Madonna for the 20th time with his monotonous voice? Yeah, this game was like that. Same thing, over and over again, done without talent. This game wasn't awful, as to say. I mean, it did what you asked, your mistakes were yours to make, but the thing is, every negative thing about it equates itself to turn it into utter shite. 
I actually created a new category in my Steam library called Utter Shit. It belongs in there now. It's his new home. Alright, so what am I going to give this game? To celebrate the new channel, I give it an empty cave hole out of 7. Well, that was a monumental waste of bloody time. Okay, everyone, thank you for watching episode 15 of my new series. Now, you know, I know there's a bit of a whiplash with the new channel. Welcome to the cave hole, I guess. Uh, me and Stacey will be making our lovely videos on here instead of old Teamworks. And uh, Teamworks will um, probably be uh, deleted uh, at some point. Uh, right, anyway, uh, continuing on. So, my uh, my Discord link and my uh, my Instagram link, or my Instagram name, should I say, uh, are in the description at the moment. Um, uh, there it will be in future videos as well. And uh, hopefully this uh, channel will be a bit of a turn away from what I, we used to do on the old channel. We'll be doing more things, like, uh, I'll be talking about stuff, like, I don't know. I'll, I, you'll see. I don't know yet. I don't have any plans. The only thing, the only plan I have is that I'm going to continue to some Steam. Otherwise, thank you for subscribing to the new channel, and I hope everybody finds out about it, because I have no idea who the subscribers are, to be honest with you. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll uh, see you in the next episode.